Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor, episode three. Number three. Yeah. So uh, this week we're going to be talking about uh, an honorable mention actually from uh, last week's mm -hmm. uh, fresh catch phrase. We're going to be talking about some prospects and who we're looking forward to seeing next season. Uh, we're going to respond to a fan question about next summer and what the team will look like in a year from now and also finish up with some story time. Very good. You ready to start the show? Let's do it. Well, as they say in hockey, wait, what do they say in hockey? Uh, let's do that hockey. Oh, I knew that. <laughs> Okay, so uh, like we said at the the top there, we have an honorable mention. Uh, this would be the first honorable mention that we've had actually. Right. Um, last week we had the fresh catch phrase for a shark story, right? Shark encounters is what we used, and we did get a response from Liz Tag. Well, there are also a lot of actual shark encounters in cages. I, yes, that were on there. <laughs> Thanks for trolling us. Uh, so in any case, uh, yeah, we, we had a, an, an actual story um, of what we were trying to get across in right. the Shark Encounters. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and read that for you now. So Liz says, years ago, I was at Safeway in South San Jose. I passed this insanely good looking, tall and ripped guy in one of the aisles and thought, how do I know him? By the time I reached the end of the aisle, it hit me that it was Thomas Grice. I turned around quickly to see which way he was going so I could stalk him. I mean, cross his path again. <laughs> I tried to think of something amazingly brilliant to say. When I passed him again, I managed to blurt out, You're Thomas Grice! <laughs> Slick, I know. He looked over at me, stopped, and just got the biggest smile on his face and said, I am! I never get recognized. <laughs> I told him I love the sharks and best of luck on the next start. He said thanks and went on his way. What was in his shopping cart? Five jugs of orange juice and tons of hamburger meat. <laughs> Hashtag shark encounter. <laughs> I don't know what's more embarrassing, what's in his cart or her reaction to him. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a great story, though. Hey, I don't know. Maybe the orange juice is for... Did he have kids? Maybe? I, I don't think so. Okay, well then, maybe it's a little embarrassing. I don't know. <laughs> Hamburgers, right? Right. Lots of meat. I wonder if he already had the gin at home. I don't know. Could be... <laughs> In any case. <laughs> so uh, thanks again, Liz. Thanks for sending that out to us. That was awesome. Uh, we encourage you guys for any future um, fresh catch phrases to go ahead and make comments, let us know, and uh, maybe we'll get you on the show as well. So with that, we'll go ahead and roll into the first thing we want to talk about today, which was? Mm -hmm. Prospects. Prospects. So the first prospect, I think, on the list here, uh, and these guys just to look out for, it's not necessarily guys that are going to be on the Sharks or maybe even on the Barracuda, but guys to look forward to. And I think the first one on my list, at least, was this Auntie Sumela, and I'm probably still butchering that name, <laughs> but I'm just going to run with it. So uh, Sumela, he's, I believe, 24 years old. Yep. He's a uh, more known for his defensive side, strangely, because he had 59 points in 60 games. He led the league. In yeah, scoring, yeah, which is amazing for a guy who's more noted uh, for, for his defensive side. Yeah. Um, and if he's able to do uh, produce a point a game at that league, uh, perhaps somebody that could step in again. He's 24 years old, so he mm -hmm. could step right into the Sharks. Yeah. Um, he he could play at the Barracuda level as well, but I think that he could offer something maybe to the Sharks' fourth line. He's the centerman. He's defensively minded, but he can still be offensively minded as well. You know, he does a, uh, have a good two-way game to him. Right. And we saw Eric Fair last year when he mm -hmm. joined the team, especially in the playoffs. He he had at least three goals in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a big scoring punch from your fourth line guys who you don't normally expect to score. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I think uh, I think he'd fit in right there. Mm -hmm. uh, what I think realistic is what would happen is that he's going to spend some time at the AHL level. Uh, coming from the Finnish league where they play on the larger ice, right. uh, he's going to have some adjustments to make. Mm -hmm. uh, this, the game's going to be a lot faster, a lot tighter. He's not going to be used to that. So um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him start at Barracuda level. Yeah, I would have to agree with you on that one. I think, again, adjusting, adjusting to mm -hmm. the uh, the rink size alone. Uh, the speed is probably um, something that, I mean, anybody's going to have a hard time adjusting to the NHL speed. Uh, even guys playing in the AHL level, then when they yeah. come up and they say, well, what's the hardest thing about coming up to the NHL? And AHL is only one level below. And the first thing they say is, well, the speed. Yeah. Right? The speed. So it's, it's all so much faster here. So definitely something that uh, he would have to work on. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think you're going to see him on the Barracuda. So yeah. maybe just one guy that you can go check out when you go see those Barracuda games yep. to make them a little more exciting. Yeah. So who else is on your list there? Uh, um, Ryan Merkley, who mm -hmm. everyone's been talking about the last, right. you know, week since the draft last two weeks um he's 
exciting. He's a great player, but is he going to be an NHL caliber, caliber player? Right. We don't know. It's really early. The guy is mm -hmm. 17. I would say he's not even a defenseman. He's a defense boy because he's not <laughs> even 18 yet. Uh, <laughs> don't don't hate on me, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was just a joke. <laughs> um, but I could see this kid... Um, Growing, it's gonna—he's gonna have some growing pains because uh, his defensive game is not quite, obviously not any right. caliber. Right, right. If it were, I could see him joining mm -hmm. the team, um, but uh, he's gonna take a couple years of developing. And there's great coaching staff down at the AHL level. Yeah. Well, he's gonna be at juniors, mm -hmm. um, so he's gonna get some experience, a lot of ice time, and it's better for him for his development too. Because if he were to jump in the NHL, he would yeah. be sheltered minutes. He wouldn't—he wouldn't learn as quickly as yeah. As, I agree. Um, as he would be getting. I agree. Going it's 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 nice to play against guys that are uh, better than you. That's how you get better. But if you're just going into the lion's den and just getting slaughtered, you're not really learning anything there either. So yeah, it's somebody uh, we would expect to see starting off. Mm -hmm. um, well, with, with his age, he'd have to play in the juniors then, correct? Yeah. So uh, he'd be back with with the team he was with. Who was that? Do you remember? Yeah. I forget. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're talking sharks hockey again. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, not a guy that I would expect to see on the Sharks right away, um, especially with uh, Dylan DeMello uh, being signed as of recent. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got six defensemen. There's really no need to have uh, somebody who's brand new trying to throw him in there. This is not an Aaron Ekblad, um, but he's he's a high high risk, high reward defenseman. Yep. Yep. Um, very offensively skilled and talented. I think they just need to work on his defensive game. Yep. And he's a little undersized. Yeah, he's... Uh, yeah. Is he 5'11", 170 pounds or something like that? I think that? something in that You're not going to be yeah. pushing around any of the NHL big boys right. uh, on defense, so <laughs> he's going to need to add some muscle to his frame, which, again, he's That'll 17. Happen. Right. He's, he's going to be turning 18, I think, in a month or two. I but think he's still growing, too. Isn't right, he? yeah. yeah. He, they said recently he grew another quarter inch or half inch or something. No, that was... Uh, that was somebody Norris. else. Yeah. My other one, yeah. Kodkov. Yeah. Let's just jump right into Kodkov. Yeah. Vladislav Kodkov, he's 18 years old. Right. Uh, he is a power forward type, but I, I've heard two different types of reports, actually. I've heard from, from one source saying that he is more of a power forward. I've heard from another source saying he's more of like a dangler playmaker type. Um, so I, add them together, I'm, I'm fine with the whole package, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. if, if this guy pans out, um, again, he's 18, so probably not someone we're going to see on the NHL roster. Probably he's not going to be able to play on the Barracuda, so right. he would either have to play in the juniors or or on the NHL level. Mm -hmm. uh, realistically, we're looking for uh, a good fourth line center. We're not looking for a power forward winger this year. So, yeah, right. So he's going to have time to develop. develop exactly. Too. Yeah. So and none of these guys really we're, we're thinking are going to make the roster right out of the shoot. Sumella yeah. may be having a good. He probably out of chance. these guys, he's going to have the best shot. Yeah, I, think, I would say. Yeah. Uh, except for guys like Dylan Gambrell, who we talked right. about a little yeah. bit, um, who've got three games of NHL experience. Is it? <laughs> a cup of coffee. Yeah, you there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, moving on from Kotkov, anybody else? Uh, Josh Norris is another ah, guy. Yeah. Uh, he was the first round pick a year ago for That's the right. Sharks. Um, he was, a, I think he was the 19th overall pick. And um, he plays at Michigan. Mm -hmm. He plays at college. He went to the Frozen Four. Um, a good defensive center. Um, I think he's a guy that you're going to see grow. He'll be down. He'll probably maybe finish all four years okay. in college. We'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, I could see him being probably a third line center for the Sharks in the future. In the future, yeah. He's got he's got offensive upside, but not quite. He's not going to be a first line center or sure. anything. Sure. Uh, but a safe bet to most likely make the NHL. All right. So those were some of the prospects that we may or may not see right. at the NHL level. Definitely, probably not see this year. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the team this year and who we're looking forward to uh, seeing play this yeah. year. Yeah, and, and for me, the first guy is, is Jumbo Joe Thornton, right? Um, he's he's 100% healthy, or will be 100% healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that Aaron had talked about last episode. And uh, I'm just looking forward to having him back uh, 100%. Not, not starting the season with a little bit of an ailment and then feeling better and then having to go through rough rehab. couple minutes of yeah, yeah. Uh, of rehab after the fact and getting hurt again and mm -hmm. yeah and he may get hurt again okay so that's just what it is age is age his knees are what they are and if he gets hurt it may not be a knee injury it could be anything right. else it could be a shoulder it could be concussion it could yeah be it's, it's a crapshoot yeah if somebody gets hurt especially a major injury like that mm -hmm. um, one thing that's really bad about knee injuries especially the two that he had um, you lose your muscle mass that's the big problem. 
So you can't really doing that. I had that same surgery and, and doing the the rehab and the workouts. It's not the same. You lose your muscle so quickly, and it's really hard to get it back. Mm -hmm. And when you finally do get it back, it's still different. You've been out of the game now at this point, yeah. three, four months. Yeah, yeah. And going back to the speed that like we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. the speed of the NHL is just so different. You can't really replicate it in practice. You yeah. can't. You, you can't do anything until you get into a game mode. Mm -hmm. And I think that was part of the reason that he held him back in the playoffs last year. He wasn't quite there. I mean, he was on the ice. He was there during warmups. Um, I bet they were just keeping him out there just to keep the other team guessing if right. he was going to play or not. Yeah, yeah. But um, the mental side of the game. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, DeBoer said that they weren't going to play him unless he was 100%. He wasn't right. at 100%. Right. Um, but anyway, like he was close. I think maybe if they got into the finals, mm -hmm. we would have seen him. Um, but to that point, uh, he's going to be healthy. Going into the season, start start of training camp, he's going to be healthy. And right. He's going to be back to his normal self. And I, I think that we'll see an uptick in the amount of points overall for other guys like Kane. Right. And that's another guy I want to talk about is, is Evander well, Kane. Well, it's funny because uh, Evander Kane has never even played with Chempo. Right. Uh, maybe in practice, but yeah. ne never in a game. So Absolutely. And it's weird to think because I feel like... I mean, we got Kane at the deadline, but it feels like he's been on the team for a lot, ta lot longer mm. than I don't know. Like, it, I don't, I don't remember when Joe left. Like, I can't remember that he was gone and yeah. then Kane came in right. when he was gone. So, and, and so weird. we haven't had the benefit of having either Kane or Jumbo for any long amount of time, a whole season mm -hmm. uh, in a while. He's not Jumbo in a couple of years. We haven't had him for the whole season. So now we're going to get Jumbo for the whole season, hopefully, if he doesn't get hurt. Right. Uh, we'll have Kane back for the whole season, hopefully, if he doesn't get hurt. <laughs> and then we'll be able to have both of them at the same time, which, again, we haven't seen that dynamic yet. And that could just, to use your, your uh, vocabulary, it could ruin teams, <laughs> <laughs> just ruin them, right? So... Um, definitely for me, two guys that I'm really looking forward to seeing how they perform, not just because uh, there's any question marks there uh, about them, but because we're going to get them back healthy the whole season and together. That's I think exciting. that's a deadly combination. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Who else are you looking forward to seeing? Uh, there's two young guys that I'm looking forward to. Uh, first one would be Timo. Um, yes. We saw him perform very well in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. He His line was uh, pretty dominant most nights. Mm. Um he really, they really worked the puck down low. Him and Hurdle, and I think Le, LeBanc or Le, LeBanc. I always say LeBanc. LeBanc. <laughs> uh, uh, they were all playing very well together. Is that, is that French? Right, LeBanc. Le I don't know. It's French Canadian, or to me, I think it's French Canadian. Like, yeah, LeBanc. Oh. <laughs> um, anyway, back to Timo. Um, yeah. Timo, uh, he's a power forward, and power forwards take a lot longer to um, do well in the NHL. It takes okay. a little bit while to 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 develop that's mm -hmm. what i'm looking for um i think seeing him and seeing his confidence grow uh, especially with the playoffs and how well he did uh and having him for a whole season and playing with that confidence the entire season i think is yeah. going to do the sharks very well yeah um and the other guy lebank um uh, i think he was a little timid mm. almost the opposite he, he didn't have the confidence he didn't have He's, he's supposed to be known for his scoring, and he was becoming more of a playmaker. I hear you, yeah. I think we're going to see more goals come out of LeBanc. Um, and I love his Twitter handle, uh, take it to the bank. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd love to see him put up at least 20 goals, LeBanc. I yeah, mean, he, I'd love everyone to put up at least 20 well, goals. Well, right. <laughs> but I, I think uh, he, that'd he's be good. capable. And I think it would be a good benchmark for him to get to 20 sure. this year. Which is interesting because he's on. he was on the first line power play. Well, the whole season, right? Not the whole season. No. Joe was out. Right. When Once Joe, Joe got out, out, he was on there. But right? when Joe's back, yeah. now that spot's going to be gone. Yeah, but I'm saying in terms of um, being timid or having confidence, yeah. um, you would think that of all the other guys that they could have put on the top power play unit in Joe's absence, they put LeBanc on there. That should be enough confidence, or all the confidence in the world that your coaching yeah. staff has in you right. to be able to perform at that level. But as you're saying, he seemed to not be taking as many shots as you'd like him to see. Mm -hmm. He's passing the puck a little bit too often. I mean, it's great to see these young kids come up and perform well yeah. and take over Marlowe's goals that we were missing last year. Yes. Um, 
We actually we looked up the stats and yeah. the Sharks had scored uh, another almost thirty, 30 goals, thirty something, twenty something goals, yeah, uh, more than they did the season before. Mm-hmm. And there were a lot of question marks going into last season because Marlowe was gone and right. his normal twenty five right. to thirty goals right. was going with them. Interestingly, um, it was also the case that uh, they had more goals against. Yep. Which I don't think has anything to do with Patrick Marlowe being there or not being there. Yeah. I just think we have uh, some some defensive issues. Defensive issues that yeah we need to have ironed out. Uh, I guess. Probably Martin Jones didn't play as well as he did the Could year be. before. Yeah. Um, so there's some ways to explain that one away, but when we're looking at sheer offensive output, the team outperformed the team from that year outperformed the team prior with Patrick Marlowe uh, right. in the roster. Yep. So. Um, Promising. We're looking forward here. I mean, there's, there's, these are young guys that are out there, and we've got some, some older folks. Yeah. But I think the young guys are kind of starting to take the reins. Like you mentioned, Timo Meyer, Kevin LeBanc, even Chris Tierney put up 40 points. He didn't score many goals, but he, I mean, he put up 40 points. 40 points is pretty good. That's pretty good, <laughs> yeah. you know. So, um, any word on that contract? By the way, I I've heard nothing. Anything. Yeah. I mean, I what the Sharks have done in the past with arbitration is uh, they feel like a player is worth something. Yeah but they don't want to jerk them over. Mm-hmm. And so they can go to arbitration and let a third party figure it out. And sometimes, a lot of the times, they meet in the middle. So before they even get to go to the front of the judge, mm-hmm. um, they'll figure out something and go, okay, and figure out a deal before them. So I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't go all the way to the court and get decided and they sign an extension before that um, or a contract before that. Um, but it... I don't know. I, I think uh, I think he needs to get paid. I think yeah. the Sharks have plenty of cap space for him yeah. this season, for the, at least. And um, I think it just also depends on where they see him in their future yes. in the lineup. Yeah, and, and and maybe it's straying a little off off the original topic, but you just kind of wonder when you see a guy that's uh, you know he got forty points and he's he's essentially the third line, fourth line center type guy on that roster, um, I, I wonder what he's asking for. I wonder what the Sharks are saying we're willing to pay. Um, I, I wonder if anybody's come knocking about him. I uh, mean, it could be it could be like uh, the situation in Columbus with Panarin. Okay. Um, they want to sign him to an extension, and he doesn't want to sign it. It's not about the money. It's mm-hmm. about the term, the length. Okay. I think, I can't remember which one's which, but... Um, they want to sign him to an eight-year. I think it's they want to sign him to an eight-year deal, and he doesn't want to be in Columbus that long. Oh wow! So, or maybe it's vice versa. I don't know. Okay. I can't remember. Um, you don't have to remember it. Sharks hockey. We're talking about right. So, so tyranny. It could be the same thing. <laughs> right. Is uh, maybe the money isn't the problem. It's the it's the length. The length. Yeah. Maybe the Sharks want to sign him longer, and he wants to kind of do more of a show, show me type deal. Right. And then make more and money later. To, yeah. Right. Right. I got you. Okay. Yeah. So that brings us to our fresh catchphrase. Yes, it of does. On my sonar. Yes. So hashtag on my sonar. <laughs> so, so if you've got somebody who's on your sonar uh, to look out for for next season, please uh, use the hashtag yep. and drop it in the comments down below or on Facebook or Twitter or anywhere else. We'll see it and uh, let us know who you're looking forward to uh, to seeing next season. Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we had a fan uh, reach out to us, uh, mm-hmm. Nick, and he posed a question about the Sharks rebuilding. He wanted to know if and when the Sharks would ever blow the team up and start rebuilding. Do you think that would ever happen? Um, I mean, ever? Sure, ever happen, maybe. Uh, I don't think that'll happen as long as Doug Wilson is the GM of the San Jose Sharks. Um, he's given no indication that that's anything he's interested in doing over his tenure there. Mm-hmm. Um, he's always prided himself on having a team that makes the playoffs consistently, that is competitive consistently, that's a good entertainment value for the fans. Um, some fans would argue that, you know, we'll find blow us up so that we can be good and then they're going <laughs> to be the same guys that complain that we're, right. we're horrible for the next five years. I mean, there's no winning. But they right? see teams like Pittsburgh getting yes. Crosby and Edmonton getting McDavid and mm-hmm. they tank, and recently Buffalo tanking and getting both Eichel and Dolan. Yes. Um, so it's almost like that's the model to win the Stanley Cup because those are the teams that have recently done it 
Well, maybe well, not yeah. after Buffalo, but <laughs> Pittsburgh has recently done it three times since right. they've gotten Crosby. But so, so that model doesn't always work. I and mean, we've seen with, with Edmonton, they've mm-hmm. had four first overall picks in the past six years. And um, Yakupov, yeah, gone. He's right, KHL bust. now. Yeah. Uh, McDavid, obviously, fine. Right. Uh, Nijia Hopkins, obviously, fine. Right. Taylor Hall, who they traded away for Larson. <laughs> not, not exactly the best trade He's in their history. Awful. But that's what I'm saying. It's it, they they don't always pan out, or you may have to trade somebody away, or whatever the case is. Last season, Edmonton didn't even make the playoffs, and they've got arguably the best player in the world, right? Um, I just don't know if that's a way for us necessarily to always get better. Yes, we'll get a good draft pick. Um, it's going to take five years, and if you're going to be one of those fans that has to complain <laughs> with us having down five years, then don't well, expect. It's also going to depend on the draft year. Every draft yeah. year is different. Yeah. Sometimes there's a generational talent. Yeah, like a Connor McDavid or a Sidney Crosby. Right. right. Or there's some years where there's a Yakupov, <laughs> who at the time was deemed the most skilled and best player. And everyone was like, wow, Edmonton's going to be stacked because yeah. they have Taylor Hall and Yakupov. It's not fair. And yeah. And they did didn't. absolutely nothing with right. that. But so getting back, I just don't think that um, you're going to see Doug Wilson tank. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think you're going to see us selling everything off. And I look at the play, the people that are on the team or the players that are on the team and who we would have to offer other teams. And we have lots of good skilled talent, but they're all signed. They're all signed for multiple years. The only ones that aren't are uh, Jumbo, who's probably Close nearing retiring. the end of, yeah. uh, of his career. Um, I, I hope you don't. I hope you play forever, Joe. I love <laughs> you, buddy. Um, but it, realistically, he's he's older. He's yeah. he's more machine than man. <laughs> right. But um, it, it, then you've got Joe Pavelski, who's got you know one year left. He hasn't been extended yet. We don't know what the future is with him. He's the captain. I hope he returns. He's great in front of the net. But beyond that, Donskoy, he's younger. He's skilled. He's not a guy that you, you hit the blow-up button and he goes anywhere and you no. get a humongous return. This is my point. So, I mean, you can trade away guys that have long-term contracts, but it just doesn't make sense to me. If you're a GM... And you've got a guy, even two years. If you've got a guy for two years, you it's, can make a trade. Guy, it's easier to move a guy for two that has two years than a guy who has eight years. Yeah, seven, absolutely. Six years, whatever. But even as, as a GM, if I've got an asset for two more years, okay, let's say it's Logan Couture. I've only got Couture on a two-year contract. That's all he's got left. If teams come calling to me, I'm asking for the farm. I want everything. I want uh, two firsts, and I want everything. And if you don't give it to me, fine. I got him for another year. What does it matter? I let the first year burn off, and then I let the second year go by, and now you right. really got to come at me. Now, okay, there's some bargaining chips back and forth either way, mm-hmm. but I just don't see that happen. I see more often than not, you'll see guys with one-year contracts being shipped yeah. uh, and in a team that's rebuilding and blowing up, and you're getting everything you can for these guys. Uh, unless a humongous offer comes to the table for somebody like a like an Evander Kane or something mm-hmm. like that, why would you trade him away? He's younger, he's highly skilled, and he's signed for a long term. Why why would you need? What are you going to do? You're going to trade him away and get somebody else or a, a draft pick for somebody that you don't know how good he a is or how good he's going to be. It's never a guarantee. Yeah, it's never a guarantee. And you've job. mentioned it too in previous episodes yeah. when you have the guarantee of having a player who's a good player versus a pick who you don't know or a prospect you don't know how this guy's going to turn out you might get okay you get a first round pick you might get a nail yakupov right and then what how how stupid do you look after that (laughs) so i don't know i think i i think doug's doing a a great job keeping the team competitive i don't think we need to blow anything up i don't think there's a reason to really blow it up we're, we're a playoff team we've yeah. been a playoff team doug wilson likes to use the word retooling yes as opposed to blowing up or, or whatever yeah. uh he likes to retool i mean imagine i can't think of two years ago thinking wow the sharks have a chance of landing john Tavares." Mm-hmm. like that if it happened that would have been wow that the future is now here's the path of the sharks yeah. Yeah. they're going to focus on Tavares as being this, the cornerstone of the team right um, it didn't happen, but who know who's to say what could possibly happen in mm-hmm. a year or two? Um, you know, you see Jumbo retire, maybe Pavelski moves on in a couple years from now, mm-hmm. and you see a lot of those older guys are gone. Now, maybe they get another cornerstone. Maybe he retools and he gets something yeah. else. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, absolutely. And as we've uh, shown in the last episode, I mean, mm-hmm. m- my uh, cap-friendly 
the the one that I put together, I had yeah. Matt Duchesne. If we can get a guy like a Matt Duchesne, mm-hmm. or if, you know, obviously John Tavares has come and gone, but there's other guys that are in this league that are at the same, not the same level as Tavares, but at a very high skill level who are unhappy with their teams, yeah. who are gonna go to free agency, that's where the retooling comes in. If you blow your team up, nobody's gonna wanna come to your team with nothing nothing that's gonna make a, a playoff run for them, right? Yeah. You know, if if our team had blown it up and then John Tavares becomes a free agent, do you think John Tavares is gonna to wanna to come play for the San Jose Sharks? No. And compete for a cup? Not gonna happen. Yeah. So he can wait on other prospects to get good? Come on, yeah. right? He's so his whole career. <laughs> I just feel like um, f- for, for me, I just don't think that there's a reason. I don't think that it's going to happen, not with Doug Wilson at the seat and even anybody else coming in that would have to be the MO for yeah. them to coming in. They would have to want to blow this team up. I just don't see the reason for it. We've got a lot of young talent. You've mentioned Timo Meyer, Kevin yeah. LeBanc. We're talking about these other guys that are coming up that they look like they might be competing for a spot sometime mm-hmm. soon. If they can step their game up by the time a Pavelski moves on, by the time Joe moves on, I mean, by the time these older guys move yeah, on. That's right? kind of the good thing about the roster right now is there's a good mix of yeah. young youth and Veterans. Mm-hmm. Veterans are going to move on. Yes. And then you're going to need to fill in everything, you know, from your younger prospects to mm-hmm. fill in those holes. So um, I think we have a good amount of prospects. They're not the best. They're not going to be, you know, John superstars. Tavares, yeah. Right. <laughs> but um, we're going to be able to plug those holes up in the future yeah. and look fine. Um, maybe we do get a, the other thing. The other thing I wanted to talk about is um, it, I think in a year from now, there's a possible blockout. Again. Right, right. CBA agreement is up, and that could change things if and when they finally agree on a new agreement. Uh, it could change the structure of the salary cap. It could mm-hmm. change the structure of how much it goes up every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, that can change a lot of things for teams. It could change. They could change the buyout uh, options. I right. mean, there's so many different things that we don't even can even fathom right now. Yeah, that could change the look of not just the Sharks but every team in the NHL. Maybe some teams will have to dump some salaries because there's a lot of dumb contracts that get signed by other teams, uh, which happens all the time, yeah. and they have yeah. to move those pieces, and they can't. So Most specifically, it happens in free agent frenzy uh, the first day or two where you start seeing people making right. these crazy contracts because they're just so desperate to get that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, we had referenced it again last episode where we said, I think you are saying he doesn't like to do these crazy contracts. And I said, well, unless he's trying to give 13 million for John Tavares and you'd say, well, the value was there, Yeah. right? Uh, a lot of these guys, David Clarkson, a lot of these guys, <laughs> the value is not there, but they're just so desperate for a look, player to fill that Milan spot. Look Lucic in Edmonton. Yeah, yeah. He's an anchor. <laughs> he's, he's just dead weight in, at least last year. Last year was an awful year yeah, for him. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he can bounce back. He's kind of getting up there in age, and mm. he's a power forward, but he can't skate well. Yeah. And he's just not producing. And he's even playing with McDavid, the best player. I mean, not every night, but yeah. he's not on the same line every night, but he does play a lot with him and still can get it done. So um, I think you're seeing a lot of the future of the NHL changing. Yeah. Uh, and maybe even going smaller. Maybe sure. that would be the future. I mean, we were certainly seeing it in defensemen. Right. Merkley being right. one. Right. Carlson being another one in Ottawa, who's probably one of the best defensemen, offensively at least, right. Right. in the right. league, and yeah. he's not a big guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, that, that's... I, yeah, back to our point. I, neither of us really see Doug Wilson blowing up this team at all. No, no. Hey, okay, so let's, let's put the scenario out there then. It's not Doug Wilson. It's you. Huh. <laughs> Do I'm kind of putting you on the spot there. Yes, oh. but I mean, okay, let's let's take the the Doug Wilson factor out of it because I think we both. Right, so then we're going to assume that they miss playoffs this year. Like they're not even going to be close. If they miss playoffs and they haven't extended Joe Pavelski, do you trade Joe Pavelski? Let's start with that. Yes. Okay. Go from there. What what else? What else do you do? Who? Man. <laughs> All right. Um, we mentioned Donskoy is Don also Skoy, on a one-year. Pavelski. I would hold on to the younger guys. Um, man, depends on how. Uh, depends on what the outlook is, and depends on what you can get for him. What do you think you might be able to get for a Joe Pavelski or for a Jonas Donskoy? Assuming we are trading them around the trade deadline, mm-hmm. and teams are desperate for players right. and looking for to bolster their probably get something pretty good contender. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably a prospect or two. 
draft picks for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a young roster player. Mm -hmm. um, and in return, maybe take on a bad contract. Sure. So you can up the value a little bit of who you're getting. Dave Clarkson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know why I'm harping on Dave Clarkson. For yeah, some I know. It's, it's rude. He's already gone. It's rude. He's, he's out. But it's a good... Right. It's a good example. Right. Um, yeah, I, I don't... Man, you put me on the spot. Yeah. I don't really know what else I'd... I mean, if it were me, I, I think I, I would probably do exactly what Doug's doing. I don't like a team that is just garbage, hot garbage for three, four, five years mm -hmm. until you, you tend to start looking better. Well, um, if uh, if they were tanking and you were the GM, would you trade Jumbo? If Jumbo wanted to leave, absolutely. He says he bleeds teal, and if he wants to play again, I'm sure he'd re-sign the next season anyway. I was just going to anyway. say for Pavelski, <laughs> you can go to Pavelski and Thornton and say, hey, look, yeah. we're, we're missing playoffs. Uh, there's I want to give you the interest. opportunity. There's interest in teams. It's going to help us out, mm -hmm. and we would love to have you back afterwards. Uh, basically, we're going to rent you out. Would you be willing to do that? And I believe they both have no trade clauses anyway, so they can nix anything. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, imagine if they had. A, there's a lot of injuries this year, and yeah. we just just yeah. things just weren't shaping up. Um, Although to be honest, the injuries would probably be to jump on the Joes. <laughs> I mean, Pavelski doesn't tend to get injured very often, I don't think, but he sure takes a beating in front of the net. It's amazing that the guy is as resilient as he is. He always gets hurt and. Playoff time. Yeah. He well, everybody's hurt. Big playoff time. beating yeah. in the playoffs. Yeah. So yeah, I never forget the uh, Shea Weber. Was it the cross check in the back uh, of Nashville? God, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he <laughs> got knocked down hard, yeah. and they knocked him down again hard, really yeah. slow to get up, and then he hit him, him again. again right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then he scored. Yeah, he scored. Right. Then he right scored that, yeah. 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 That was just sweet, sweet revenge. Great revenge. Yeah. <laughs> it's That's great the best. Way to do it. Yeah. It's, you know, you can retaliate. Kids, when you're playing hockey, you can retaliate <laughs> or you can beat them on the scoreboard. Beat them on the scoreboard. <laughs> if you retaliate, don't get caught. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great advice. Great life lessons here yeah. at Benefactor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's let's uh, finish off the show with uh, some stories. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, one story at least. We'll see if, right. if I've got one for you or not. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> uh, I'll talk about the first Sharks game mm -hmm. that I went to. Uh, it was at the Cow Palace. My dad yes. took me. I was a kid. And I don't remember much because I was young. Um, there's a few things that definitely stand out, though. One of them being it, the smell was horrendous. <laughs> it, it just smelled like... Um, Cow, cow. <laughs> and urine and just stale beer and disgusting, just yeah. gross. Yeah. Um, there were people, there were sharks fans that were behind us, older, and they were drinking beer out of a milk <laughs> jug, like a, a one gallon plastic milk jug that they filled with beer and brought it into their own, brought it in for themselves. Stay classy, San Jose. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, maybe the beer is expensive at the Cow Palace back in the day, I have no idea. Um, the other thing that I remember <laughs> is the Sharks were awful. Um, Kelly Kissio right. was the best player on the yep. team. Yep, captain. And, yeah, mm -hmm. and he, um, the, the guys behind us were, were heckling him, which I didn't understand <laughs> why you would heckle your own team. Granted, we were, we were losing, but as a kid, yeah. I was like, why, why are they, why are they rooting against the Sharks? I don't get it. Like, <laughs> and then they were using a lot of profanity, and my yeah. dad was getting really nervous and freaked out and stuff, but, um. I mean, that's about it. They, I, I remember they sucked. There was a lot of fights. Yeah. Um, the smell, the people behind us, and their beer. That's it. That's all I remember. Couldn't tell you the score. Couldn't uh, tell you apart, who played. Apart from the people behind you and the beer, uh, I don't... I mean, it's, it's amazing how much things have changed. <laughs> I mean, there's no urine smell, which is great. Yeah. Um, people are still heckling the fans, or the, 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 the players, sharks. quite a bit. Yeah, but, when they start uh, losing. Yeah. yeah. And, not terribly. <laughs> Not like the stuff that they were saying. Yeah, yeah. That's where I also learned the, the phrase, uh, kill the zebra. I've never heard that before. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious as a kid. Um, yeah, they said some other things too, and I can't remember. But yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember going to the Cow Palace. I don't have a specific story about the Cow Palace. I just do remember the smell. Yeah. Uh, my, my dad took me when I was younger, and I don't really remember anything about it other than walking through um, the little turn thing whatever it is the, yeah whatever right. it is walking through that um and then getting to the uh to our seats mm -hmm. 
but it was just yeah, it was just horrible smell in there, just <laughs> cow dung and whatever yeah. else. Well, thankfully, it smells a whole lot better in here. So yes, there's that, I suppose. In any case, uh, that's all we have for uh, season uh, one, episode three. Yep. Of the Fin Factor. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching very much. Um, we'll see you next week, maybe. We will see you next week. Assuming there's enough sharks news to scrape up in July. Yes, it, it becomes a little more difficult, so we might <laughs> skip here and there, but we'll let you guys know. Uh, just keep track of us on all social media, yeah. and you'll know when we're posting our next one. Yep. Thanks. Okay. See you later. Bye bye. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.